Hello everyone, I'm going to do a quick rundown of the U-Wing review. We've had some more updates come through from FFG, so I've got a little bit more information now than when we had the initial Rogue One ship spoiler article. So we've got the dial and a few more pilots and everything, and a lot more of a crew card to talk about. So I'm going to go through and um, just give some rough builds. I've not really had much time to plan any cunning builds or anything like that so I might do a should I fly it video on this wait on in a week once I've had a bit more time to mull it over but let's get right into it so we have the blue squadron pathfinder is a pilot skill 2 version of the u-wing comes in at 23 points so the obvious comparison is going to be to the lambda class shuttle for the imperials and I'm going to reference that a little bit throughout the, uh, the segment so it has three attacks, one agility, four hull, four shields, comes with a focus and target lock action, and it has a sensor slot, torpedo slot, and two crew slots. And you can see straight away the similar similarities to a lambda, with uh, only one less hull, one less shield. Um, it has torpedoes instead of a cannon slot. But when you look at the... Um, pivot wing title card which is a zero point title you've basically got to count that agility as two for the majority of the time you're going to be flying this ship um so on a, like a survivability stance it's probably going to be a wash you're going to roll probably at least two evades extra throughout the game with uh, that extra dice in there so survivability wise it should be fine so then you're looking at the two points extra coming somewhere and I'd probably say the dial is worth two points more so we have um, one banks and a one forwards which is green we have the all of the twos the two herds two banks and two forwards the banks and straight are green then we have the three bank and the three forwards being white and then a four forwards which is white the only red move on the dial is a zero so it doesn't have a K turn, but when we flip the dual card title, the pivot wing title, which is, reads increase your agility value by one, after you execute a manoeuvre, you may flip this card. So flipping it changes it to a landed section. So when you reveal a zero manoeuvre, you may rotate your ship 180 degrees. So you basically end up with a zero K turn, which is... Um, pretty interesting, it will help it stay in the fight certainly, um, if you have that approach, get your shots off, normally with the shuttle, uh, the lambda, when you've passed the engagement, it takes a while to get back into it, as the engagement passes you, you can just rotate round with this, you do have to set it up and you end up taking a turn's worth of fire at only agility 1, but there's ways and means of playing this ship that I think are going to be quite interesting. And again, it has the same, um, after you execute a manoeuvre, you may flip this card. So the manoeuvre doesn't have to be a zero. You can bluff people with it, things like that. But the only reason to want to flip it this way is to get access to your zero K turn, basically. Um, with that in mind, I do think the two points are going to be fine. I don't think it's going to be massive overcosted ship i think um the value you get out of the lambda the dial and access to this zero k will balance it out with the uh, the u-wing the things i'll point out later on is more important but then take that one off the ps3 pilot is heftober he is Power skill 3 obviously it doesn't have access to an EPT it costs 24 points but it does have the power ability after an enemy ship executes a maneuver that causes it to overlap your ship you may perform a free action um, so there's ways and means of abusing free actions when you're being touched like saboteur is a good one you could go for especially if you um, combine it with anti-pursuit lasers things like that but it's just a shame it doesn't have the EPT to get access to like a barrel roll because you can force them to bump, they lose their action and then you can barrel roll off them to get your shots and stuff like that. 
but no EPT, scupper zap plan. Engine could be used in a similar type of situation, but it's not going to be as effective. Um, but it's it's fine. Like you can do. I think they talk about in the article. You can put Zeb on this guy, and um, where I would be looking is take the focus action. And then if somebody bumps into you, you target lock them. If you've got Zeb, and then you can fire some um, advanced proton torpedoes at range one. You know me, guys. By now, I'm always looking for a way to make advanced proton torpedoes work, um, and that it's going to be five hits from that most likely. Um, throw guidance chips on there as well for uh, an extra guaranteed crit and it seems fine but you still run into the zeb problem of they can still shoot you and you're only going to be firing at ps3 so it's not like you get to zeb and shoot them early potentially killing them they're most likely going to be getting you first um the pilot school 4 guy is body rook he is 25 points again no EPT when a friendly ship acquires a target lock that ship can walk onto an enemy ship at range one to three of any friendly ship and uh, this is really interesting this is the one I've been trying to get my head around what builds I'd want to do um, how it could work I think the um, bandit squadron the tower squadrons and doing a PS4 swarm with a bit of ordnance could work, but you don't actually get that many ships in there. Um, it, it's fine, it's not great, but uh, maybe having this in combination with an A-Wing blocker can really help set up an Alpha Strike, as your A-Wing is fast enough and probably survivable enough to be there. It's going to move in first, not get its target lock, but then the rest of you can get yours. Um, the scope uh, I think it's going to have to be a very synergistic build but that's just on the pilot ability uh, then we can't we don't have a card for it but we do have um, right on the front of the uh, picture you can make it out is uh, Katan Andor so he has power skill 6 cost 27 points and does have an EPT and he is at the start of the activation phase you may remove one stress token from one of a friendly ship at range one to two um that's really nice i definitely like this ability um once we get to one of the uh, other crew cards i think yeah in fact, i think it's his own crew card so it won't work let me check no that's fine we'll get there um yeah so when we get to um i think it's the inspired recruit but I'll uh, not jump too far ahead. Some synergies there. Um, the access to EPT is going to be good. Um, where I would go with Carson, um, similar to Kyle Ren in the fact that it's only PS6, but he does have the EPT. Um, still relatively cheap at 27 points. I wouldn't overload him too much, but he's one I'm going to play around with because that stress removal can really be uh, be good for trying to counter your opponent's plans and stuff like that you if you don't know which ship's going to clear a stress before they get to activate it gets a lot harder to guess where you're going to be going okay so then we'll look at some of the crew cards so we have Jane, which we've seen already, which is as an action, you get to choose a friendly ship at range 1 to 2 and assign one focus token to that ship for each enemy ship inside your firing arc at range 1 to 3. You cannot assign more than three focus tokens in this way. Uh, she's a good one just to throw on um, any ship that's got uh, uh, firing arcs that you're going to be getting in the way. So I, I do like the idea of her uh, on a lawful rebel for example because you've got the front and rear firing arc so you can really rack up the focus tokens you're going to pass on to people but it's an action so it's going to have to go really deep into your list design if you want to make that work but it's only two points it's not massively expensive then we have Kassan Andor as the crew card which we've seen already I think I called him a super intel agent um, 
I really still still feel the same about him, really like him. Does all of the same stuff as an Intel agent, which does see play in uh, a few different styles of list. But this one lets you uh, actually react to that and can really be a game changer if you're in the end game. We have Baldy Rook, who uh, when you acquire, so this is the same guy as the PS4, so when you acquire a target lock, you can lock onto an enemy ship at range 1 to 3 of any friendly ship. So it gives you the pilot ability as a crew card for only one point, but it's only on the ship that he's equipped onto. So, um, where would I probably take him? Definitely on some kind of ordnance carrier. Right, throw him onto a cheap uh, garden or warden squadron pilot where you're going to be definitely trying to take out someone with an alpha strike that way. Um, you've got the option for long range scanners normally, but with this this guy on board you can still take your guidance chips and then use your other ships to try and force your your opponent's hand to let you get a target box so it's decent enough i like it um again this is one of the ones that i've not fully managed to think out yet don't think he's going to be a game changer per se where's malbus is rebel only again a crew card. After you perform an attack that does not hit, you may immediately perform a primary weapon attack against a different ship. You cannot perform another attack this round. So, um, it's like Gunner, but you need to shoot at something different. So, I like this on a high pilot skill ship. Where you're going to um, strip tokens off multiple things. So if you're going to be like enabling with, um, for example, if you're going to use body rock as your U-wing, you could put blaze on the, so as long as everyone's a lower pilot skill, so we go back to say the, um, the swarm of a couple of Zeds with uh, munitions and things, you want to try and remove some tokens so you can cover off some shots, strip tokens from multiple targets and maybe alpha a couple of things out in one go from the follow-up ships. But three points is not as good as Gunner. Um, I, I don't know if I'd take him over Gunner. It depends how tight I was on the points and again how many ships I had shooting after this one because um, it doesn't have to go on this. You can put it on you can put it on a hawk, you're not going to, but you know, anything with a crew swap, throw this guy on there. Um it can do okay, It'd do fine, but I'm not sure. I need to actually see this on the table. Um what am I gonna um, it's a second attack, so it's, it's got the potential, but definitely not as good as Gunner, which is why it's cheaper. Then my favourite one from these crew cards, it's uh, not Rebel only, so anyone can take this, is Inspiring Recruit. Once per round, when a friendly ship at range 1 to 2 removes a stress token, it may remove one additional stress token. So now we're trying to get into the anti-stress meta. Which, as I say, when you take him with uh, Cass and Andor, who well, just at the start of the activation phase, you can remove one. So, well, so actually remove an additional one. It, it's got shenanigans, so you can start doing um, a rage build. Um, really mess with people. Rage is a really powerful EPT, which is priced really cheap because of the detriment of having to take two stress. Inspiring recruit on a ship that can take it. Suddenly it's uh, looking good. I mean, you could have a raging Cass and Andor with this guy on it, and that would come out at 29 points, and you'd never suffer the negatives of rage at all. You um, don't even need to be doing greens because he's just removing them automatically. It can also work really well with Kanan if you're going to go for that full on stress removal open dial kind of play style you can get rid of stuff if you're 
using uh, pattern analyzer to let your ships do uh, red moves and still wanting to push the limits stuff like that all of his stress can get cleared pretty easily with this guy um definitely going to be fun uh will we'll see play um this is my favorite card out of the pack to be honest Ex excluding the actual ships um then from the spread was a couple ones that i haven't been able to identify we do get an extra way to get sensor jammer now which is always useful um it was only currently in the lambda which is why a lot of people have multiples um for jet torpedo fine um there's another crew card we've not seen and then some other uh, it's exp so i'd ex i'd guess that explosive or experienced something like that i don't know and then you get stealth device you get two um inspiring recruits in the pack um yeah i've looking like a good pack i'm gonna pick one up definitely the one thing i did want to talk about when we bring it to the um discussion about like comparing it to the lambda is uh, the reason the lambda is such a good support ship is because of palpatine not necessarily because of the ship itself so you need to go about flying this in a different way this needs to pull its own weight a lot more than the lambda does the rebels also don't have as slippery aces as the imperials do for that kind of play style so whilst you can do similar things i don't think it's going to work in exactly the same way but at um 23 points for a boy squadron i think there's going to be a lot of scope to throw this into a list get some support out there i mean it can be a pretty offensive blocker with um what is it advanced scopes where you can move at pilots go zero and uh Kassen and or crew you can really get in there and try and block people but there's many different ways you can play it i've think that what you don't want to do when you're looking at this ship is pigeonhole yourself too hard into one play style before you've thought about other ways of doing it so hope you enjoyed the video uh if you're listening to this i'll probably cut it into one of the podcast episodes later as well so hope you enjoy the segment and thanks for listening and watching and let me know in the comments if you've thought about anything different cheers for watching